Okay. All righty. It is 6.33, and with us this evening... Oh, I have to look. I can't see that. Oh, wait a second. I can see. I can see. We have uh, Kim Dunsmore, Chris Hood, <coughs> Shane... Oh. Okay, got it. <laughs> Shane Steele. Doubly. What? Craig Schulte. <laughs> And Patrick Knight, Ben Peters, <laughs> Bill Lovis, myself, Michael Dare, <laughs> and Mike Ra. Who am I forgetting? All right, we are ready to roll. Um, first up is open forum, and I am going to start the open forum this evening because I believe individually all the counselors have received these two emails, but they have both requested that I read them out loud, so I am going to. The first one I'm going to read is from Eric Humphrey. I'm very concerned about having a nice alternative to the former public bathrooms at City Hall. I urge you to support a trailer that is dis disability accessible. The benefits for both locals and tourists are enormous because the economy of Grand Marais is built on tourists coming downtown to shop, dine, drink, and enjoy. I believe that pr by providing a quality trailer for bathrooms, the city will be demonstrating that we all care about providing as best an atmosphere as possible. My business does provide a bathroom that, while not public, we have never yet turned anyone away because they didn't buy anything or won't. By ensuring quality facilities, I believe that people will return to Grand Marais more often and help offset the cost through increased spending. <coughs> Conversely, Grand Marais has a lot to lose if we don't offer quality facilities if we lose visitors who don't want to come back after having a bad experience. I think that the trailer would retain a fair amount of value if the city decided to sell it after using it for less than a year. Conversely, if the city decided to keep it, it would provide nice additional facilities for peak times and special events. I can't help but think of parents with small children and anyone with a physical need for help in the bathroom and how difficult and uncomfortable that would be will be without quality facilities. Please make a trailer with disability access a priority for our fine city. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration regards Eric Humphrey. So that is number one. And number two is from Anne Mershon. Dear City Council members, first, thanks for your commitment to our community. I know it's a lot of work, and I've learned the hard way that the more you do, the more you get kicked. But I've written you once about the lack of restrooms in Grand Ray, and I appreciated getting a response from Tracy. And so if you remember, that was several months ago. Pretty sure it's a while ago. However, I think you need to know that local businesses are carrying the weight and expense of restroom pressure on Grand Marais. As president of the first and second thrift store board, I can attest to the fact that our restroom is in constant use at our expense because Grand Marais doesn't have decent facilities for tourists. Tracy assured me that the new city hall would have better restroom facilities than the previous one, one stall for women and not such a nice one at that, but you need to think ahead. I traveled in New Zealand where small tourist towns had beautiful public restroom facilities with numerous stalls for both men and women. Our city and county must look ahead to provide adequate facilities that are higher quality than Petey's Potties, as nice as they are. As a person who has gastric issues, I need to know where facilities are available everywhere I go. It's no fun, believe me, to come on a community like Grand Marais where many businesses have no public restroom signs posted. You're incredibly lucky to have the Lake Superior Trading Post, Best Fudge and Gifts, and the first and second thrift store that allow the public to use their restrooms. The visitor center has one, has all of one very nice stall, and the library and Voyager are other options for tourists. Let's see, 100,000 tourists in August, I wonder how many stalls we should offer. This is just my two cents, but I'll pound on this issue for a while. Oh, the Pincushion Overlook has a toilet, one more for our million summer visitors. Please consider this situation carefully. If we value our visitors, we need to treat them well. Anne Mershon. 
So those are the two I was asked to read this evening, and now I will open up open forum. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to come up with a different way to start that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor Benson, Councilors, Teresa Baida with the Cook County Grammar EDA, Joint EDA. Uh, I'm here this evening just to make a couple comments about the restroom discussion. The mission of the EDA is to support small businesses and entrepreneurs and economic development in Cook County. There's no denying that Cook County is a tourism-based economy and relies heavily on visitation. Small businesses, lodging providers, restaurants located in Grand Marais are part of this important economic ecosystem. I think are to the special events that take place, Fisherman's Picnic, the Grand Marais Arts Festival. Uh, I know council discussed options for temporary restrooms during the closure of City Hall at the March 13th and March 20th meeting, and my understanding is the discussion was then tabled. Um, after hearing from some local businesses, I'm simply here to request that councilors consider adding that tabled discussion back to the agenda to provide community and business owners in Gramory with more information. Thank you. Thank you. And just as an aside, um, since Patrick has returned, that full March 13th video is now available. <coughs> Unfortunately, um, just not the best night in the world, but only part of the video was posted originally, but all, it's over an hour long, is now up there on the YouTube channel if anyone wants to see the rest of that March 13th meeting. Yes? Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My name is Tyler Dean, and my wife Jessica and I own the Ben Franklin in town. Um, and we too would like to just discuss the restroom issue. <laughs> um, so the number one question we get. Well, besides where's something in your store is where is the closest public restroom and they always 99% of the time they say public restroom and um, it's also where's the closest one assuming there's multiple okay so my wife and I just wanted to um, write a letter to uh, the council members um, and uh, then some of the business owners in town uh, signed it as well just in agreement with it so I'll just read that letter to the members of the Gramary City Council, as the summer season approaches, the need for accessible and adequate public restrooms in our city becomes not just a convenience, but a necessity. The upcoming demolition of the existing public restrooms and the construction of the new city hall and liquor store project highlights an urgent need for temporary restroom facilities. The deliberations amongst the city hall or city council regarding the leasing or purchasing of ADA designed portable uh, restroom trailers have shown a commitment to finding a solution yet as the decision remains pending we the undersigned urge the council to act swiftly in finalizing these temporary accommodations the downtown small business community along with the Chamber of Commerce has strongly advocated for an ADA restroom trailer emphasizing its necessity beyond the meager idea of additional porta potties this preference is not only about convenience but also about respecting and upholding the dignity of our residents and visitors including those with disabilities the decision for a suitable option impacts not only the summer's visitors but also the long-term per, uh, perception of our city as a welcoming and accessible destination therefore we call upon the City Council to one quickly finalize the decision on a provision of an ADA compliant uh, portable restroom trailer to ensure that the selected option is implemented in a time for the start of the busy season and three recognize the significance of this provision as a reflection of our community's values and hospitality let us collectively ensure that Gramary remains a city that prioritizes the needs and dignity of all of its residents as well as visitors. Your action on this matter is not only uh, anticipated but deeply appreciated by the entire community. Sincerely, Tyler and Jessica Dean. Um, the other businesses that signed it uh, were Red Pine Realty, Lake Superior Trading Post, Bucks Hardware, Joy Co., The Big Lake, The Art Colony, Great Gifts, North Point, Visico County, and The Chamber. Uh, Java Moose, Holiday Gas Station, Superior Creamery, The Fisherman's Daughter, Dairy Queen, Voyager Brewing, Stone Harbor Wilderness Supply, Drury Lane Books, Sievertson Gallery, and there was a number of businesses that were out of town during the time that I wrote this and was trying to get signatures, but there was many other ones that would have signed if they were in town. So thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Al.
Is there anyone else here for open forum this evening? Um, I will make just one comment about this. So after our March 27th meeting in which this issue was tabled, I asked that it be on our next agenda. Let me have my dates correct now. Is this the next agenda? Yes. Uh, we, one of the things we asked for after that meeting's conversation was the concern of our total overall costs related to City Hall and Liquor Store, and Mike asked for more time to kind of get that together for us, which he has today. What I wanted was also that discussion on at the same time. Um, Should we add that to the agenda then? As a, I don't know. Instead of, because right now, isn't it part of the, <coughs> yeah, the update here. I mean, that could just be part of that discussion, couldn't it? I'm fine with that if everyone feels they have the info from before when Dave last presented. Um, I didn't print <coughs> it all out again, not that we couldn't pull it up, but um, I, this can't wait. And um, I appreciate Ben tabling it. I appreciate Mike getting the numbers to help us get this together. Yeah. We've certainly now heard from our local community. It's either tonight or for me, it's our work session next week. But the time is of the essence for this decision. Well, so. I've put forward that we do put it on the agenda tonight. I mean, we've had ample time to, to look over the information before. Okay. Nothing has changed on, I mean, certainly some things may have changed, but mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm just putting it out there if the other counselors um, right. are up for that. Would you? I mean, uh, otherwise, we could do it at work session, but I'm just putting that forward as a, an option. Okay. Would you like to make a motion? I'm that? making that motion. All right. Would anyone like to second that motion? Add the agenda. All right, I will second that. Okay. Uh, roll call, for once I remembered. Craig. You need to unmute yourself, Craig. <clears throat> this is to put this on the agenda for tonight. My speaker's not working too good, but. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So we have a discussion tonight about it? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, that's fine, yes. Ben? Yeah. Bill? Yes. Okay. Myself? Yes. Yes. All right. We will add that down then under the liquor store, um, City Hall liquor store budget in there then. <coughs> all right. Thank you. Um, all right. We will move on to the consent agenda. I guess I would. Yes. Move to approve the consent agenda with the addition of the bathrooms. Discussion. Um, okay. Um, <coughs> any uh, questions about minutes or bills or anything? Comments about the consent agenda? Okay. Craig? No. Okay. Um, <coughs> a second on. Michael's motion then? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, ben? Aye. Bill? Aye. Aye. Michael? Aye. Craig? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, day. pardon? Mayor for a day. Yes. So we started this some months ago and um, invited both of the schools to participate. Great Expectations did, and they wrote their essays, and Charlotte Hausner uh, won an honorable mention. It was printed in their uh, magazine, as they do every year, along with the other winners. It's fun to see her face and a little summary. And she was in North Shore Journal as well with a nice photo, and uh, all very good. Then they also, as a group, put together a video for each of their presentations, and they presented them, and they had this video. So their instructor, Chuck Byron, um, passed that over to Patrick, and we're going to just spread them out for a couple meetings and watch. Is it two or three tonight, Patrick? Uh, we suggest four. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. 
Yeah. Um, so I'm going to play them from this computer, and uh, they're on YouTube. So I might have to deal with like five seconds of ads, if at all. Um, but give me a second here to get this ready. It's OK. The kids had some really great, we talked about it one other time. Oh, the radio featured them as well some time ago. And um, yeah, and it's pretty neat. I went up and helped them when they did their video. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, there we are. <laughs> not sure why this is not playing out loud. Let me see here. They had good ideas. It's always fun. Mm. And Charlotte won, I believe, for recycling. It was her theme. Or Charlie. Give me a minute here. I apologize for this. It's OK. OK. I think that's the problem. The kids left just before the fun stuff of video. She stuck around. Just a second here. And with me today is our acting mayor. Please welcome. I was elected to be mayor today, and I've been thinking. We need to give those loyal firefighters a raise. Even if they are volunteers, they need to be noticed too. The average firefighter gets $8 an hour, and ours gets 17 I will raise their compensation to 20 or even 25 Tip jars will be needed, of course and lots of fun players. but I know we can do it because there are lots of wonderful people out there who care about this. Citizens can get motivated to become firefighters too, so this will impact everyone in a good way. Let's give kindness to the volunteer firefighters for being their job. <coughs> Hi, my name is Tracy Benson. I'm the mayor of Grand Marais, the best little small town in Minnesota. And with me today is our acting mayor. Please welcome I'm there for a day, so one time I went to the library and there weren't enough books to read. It's the mayor's job to listen to residents and help the city meet its goals, so I would put, I'm would i going to put more books in the library. I would improve the service so kids don't play video games as much, and so they can read more books. I would do it by getting money from all the other stuff the city makes money from. And then buy more books. I think this will help everyone in the community, including tourists. This improvement will help kids and grown-ups not rot their brains out. All I'm saying is I think a lot of people would benefit from this improvement. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tracy Benson. I'm the mayor of Grand Marais, the best little small town in Minnesota. And with me today is our acting mayor. Please welcome. <laughs> I'm Queen Johnson, and I've been elected mayor for one day. I will redo our public restrooms. We only have one stall, and there's always toilet paper all over the ground. The door hardly even locks anymore. The paint is stripping off the wall, and there's only one stall. As mayor, I have many duties, like finding out how much money each business needs for the year. As mayor, I would like to hire people to redo the public restrooms. It is important that people are visiting and having a nice time. So more people will come, and our businesses will make more money. The public restrooms are unsanitary because there's dirt and rust on the doors. The city will hire people to paint, clean, and redo the locks. If we redo the public restrooms, anyone who uses the restrooms will have an even better experience in Grand Marais. The new restrooms will be nicer because you won't have to wait around for the tour bus every time when tourists come and experience the bathrooms, they will tell their friends about Grand Marais and as a, as a nice place 
and that's why I think we should redo our public restrooms. Hi, my name is Tracy Benson. I'm the mayor of Grand Marais, the best little small town in Minnesota. And with me today is our acting mayor. Please welcome. My name is Jimmy McIntyre, and I have been elected mayor for a day. I will do great things for the community. America's a lot of things, and one of the things they do is be on the city council. The city council makes the city's decisions. As mayor, I would convince the city council to expand the library and improve my city's recycling. Expanding the library would be good because it would allow for a wider selection of books. Moving the recycling would be good for the lake and the animals in it. I would also improve the housing in my town that puts the biggest problem there. I would also advocate for road salt alternatives, including gravel, cheese barn, etc. The reason this is important is because road salt goes into the lake, which my town is right off, part of the creatures. I have been elected mayor for the day, and I will do great things for my community. <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Tracy. <laughs> That was four, if I counted right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, <laughs> no, so good. Kids did a nice job. <coughs> Thanks to all of them. That's a great that's way to start a meeting, right there. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. There. We know what to do. Kids know how to zero in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, focus. They're good. All right. So the planning commission. So I will turn that over yeah. to Michael and Ben. Well, hopefully people have read their agendas. Um, Unfortunately, I wasn't there right, for this right. one. Um, our first one up, the Yuri uh, bearings. Um, I suppose you all saw that. And one of the things to remember about this lot is that it actually, because of its location, it has two fronts and two sides. So that makes it a little funky in terms of the setbacks and that kind of thing. Um, but it's pretty much exactly what we want to have happen in the the R1 district and where it's located and the near neighbor mom seemed fine with it and yeah, there was another uh, member of the community that came by and also said that they were in support of it so it seemed like there wouldn't be any reason to stand in the way of that um, so did, if commissioners had or counselors had any questions you know we can dig into that I just have a general question. So yeah. why your street side, your setbacks get even farther, which relates to what you were saying about the other development. Is that it? Your setbacks, if you're as opposed to interior. Okay. Yeah. That's a just general question. Yeah. Bill, did you have anything? No? Craig? Um, you got to unmute yourself. Yeah, pin him again, too. I don't have anything, any questions. Okay. Well, let's see, I would make a motion then to approve the Yuri variance resolution 2024-25. Second. All right. Uh, ben? Oh, I'll, oh, so any more questions, <coughs> comments? Okay, double check. Ben? Uh, aye. Bill? Aye. Aye. Michael? Aye. aye. Craig? Aye. All righty. And with that, we have passed resolution 2024-25. We'll move on to the next resolution. Yes. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, you want? Or you could stay. You can want. <laughs> yep. Thank you. And yeah, so you've seen the preliminary plat here that we have uh, with the variance requests for this one. Um, you know, I can't really speak to the broader picture, but in terms of what we're looking at in terms of the variances, um, it's very uh, similar to what uh, the skilled, I don't remember the name of it, it's something unchained. Vesta. Vesta Unchained, so very <laughs> similar to that in terms of the, the dead end street, um, the uh, private street, pri private dead end, hammerhead, yeah. um, all of those types of things. So it's very similar to that. Um, and in terms of the, the usage of the area, I mean, that is the kind of thing that we want to 
see happen, that kind of infilling of some of the larger tracks that we have that are off from the main main roads, as you can see with that um, that particular property. Um, Chris and I had a conversation before you get too much further today <coughs> about the setback variance being included in this. Yeah. And, and he was saying no. No. Yeah. It's not a good yeah. fit. It's not the right process, he's telling me, which makes sense. The setback variance. It did feel a little weird. The, it's weird all the way around because the what our subdivision ordinance says is that the plat has to comply with our zoning requirements. So when we're getting a variance from our subdivision section, which is the dead end street, the private street, yeah, that's not a zoning issue. But the setback being a zoning issue, he says, yeah, we'll need to find use different findings and uh, just have a separate approval process for that variance that's specific to the build. So that makes sense to me. Uh, what I've told the applicant and um, what I'm going to tell you is that I, I think what we should do is just pull that piece of it out tonight. Okay. Uh, and I'll just need a little more time with Chris to figure out what the best process is to move forward. It might be as simple as bringing a new resolution to your next meeting if we feel like the hearing that we held met all the requirements and the right mm -hmm. findings were made, which is okay. possible, or it might mean that we have to go back and continue that conversation specific to the setback variance. So yeah, in order to pull it out, there's just a couple sections in the resolution that we'll remove, and I'll tell you what those are when you're ready to look at the resolution. Okay. I just have a question, though. If we approve this, but that's still an issue, are we jumping? for the horse on this? I mean, should it all be done at the same time? I don't... If the um, applicant has a pretty fast timeline for doing the development, so I think it probably serves that purpose better to prove what we can tonight, if you're willing to, and circle back and take a look at that separate issue, which okay. is just as important to them, but, but uh, when we can. Okay. Be separated. Can I make just a quick comment? Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Um, so you would basically be approving the resolution on the preliminary plat subject to the variance. So we are tying the two together, but the variance does take a separate action. So that I think when you make your motion to um, adopt the resolution, assuming that is what you want to do, uh, that you would make that motion uh, to approve resolution 2024-2026 subject to uh, the variance. And the, okay. Okay, this is setback. still begs my question again. If, if this variance is a huge issue, why would we approve even this subject to it if, or is it so... It, uh, I think it's important enough to signal what you're willing to approve tonight to help move the project forward. Um, I mean, if the whole question is held up, that potentially backs their schedule up. And if you do decide you're willing to approve the preliminary plat tonight, they can at least move forward with some reasonable assurance. And then they can revisit. We can figure this process question out. And really, uh, that that setback requirement to me that's that's to me that's like within their build altogether. So anybody who's going to be it's it's not like they're asking for a variance of something that already exists. It doesn't even exist yet. So, so it's, it's in some it's ways, and they're talking about their distance from the street okay. that hasn't even been built and doesn't exist. And so, to my mind, it's something that we can say like okay we need to we'll keep it in advance and we'll do it when we have a moment but if, but if we're okay with the general picture then so it's something that is still very workable yeah because yeah, it I really mean, is like, i mean they could just decide not to do that one okay. in the end they could just say like well we'll just well they they said at our meeting that one makes a difference oh i know so I know. well that's what they would want yeah oh. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to get by the speaker. I know you like that. Um, Charlie Troval, North Shore Land Surveying, um, here kind of, you know, ask, answering technical questions. The, I guess my thought on it is, worse, our worst case scenario, I mean, I, I can't necessarily speak for our, the developer on it, but 
would be if you don't get the variance, that would probably just become an out lot in the plat. Um, I know that wouldn't be or isn't the preference by the developer and stuff, but I think okay. that would be the worst case scenario. So yeah. at least getting a feel for the rest of the aspects of the plat tonight, like Mike kind of just mentioned, would probably make sense and you know give us some guidance on where things are going. <coughs> yeah. okay. And, and that, it's that, possible that we met all the requirements we needed to at the Planning Commission's public hearing last week. Just since that's a new question for me, I, and I want to just make sure we get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. All right. That um, helps. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was something that would mess all your other plans up to the point where you know, like, what could you, whatever, like, you weren't worth, wasn't worth your time to keep at it, but. I'm getting it better now. Thank you. And I guess I don't completely under know the answer to that from the, you know, I guess I'm not the numbers person on it for the aspect of how many lots we get out of it, but at least, you know, I think getting an idea of the rest of the plat meets what you guys are looking at, I think is important to us at this point. I had one other question, which I think I asked you this the other week, and I'm st I want to make sure I understand this. The one difference on the street. Is mean between this and Skeldoms, or uh, no, just oh. with this one. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. The the there we go. Uh, pa page. I just had it and then scrolled right by it. There is we it go. This one? Page thirty six. Oh no, not this one. Um, where it just talks about the the proposed right of way width is less than the standard sixty six. The yeah. street will be a normal width. It's just the like boulevard, so to speak, would be the smaller side. That's where, it, and that's what you were explaining. Did I get that right the other week when you? Yeah. So add another level of detail to that. We don't have a standard width street that we require. It's something that we might think about adding some details like that if we're going to continue to see more and more of these subdivisions, but. The, the right of way that they're proposing is 33 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they've given us a road design. Do you know what the um, pavement top? There's a preliminary stormwater one that shows uh, yeah, what was in yeah. there that shows kind of how the the road is designed to be. The MSA the engineer offset the road so that there could be a good ditch on one side so it's not perfectly centered in that 33 foot right away. And it's um, it's what 22 24 feet something like that and something it, like that. I don't it's know definitely exactly. more than some driveways that you've seen around that access multiple houses in the county. Uh, it it would certainly look and feel like a typical gravel road feeding a development like this and wouldn't seem small but it's smaller than that paved road outside the window which is 40 feet wide so that's what i want to know yeah but you think about like your standard 66 foot right away usually puts the lot lines on the house side of the sidewalk so there is a lot of usual green and sidewalk and stuff like that in a 66 feet so like i guess you know there's a lot there's quite a bit of there 66 is really wide considering the, yeah. the reason we want it that wide is to have room for stormwater handling utilities sidewalks expansion in the future lots of things you get one crack at getting the right away and then we're there, you're not going to go back and add more property from these people's yards in the future so they're planning all of those things right now up front which is one of the reasons why you can consider it uh, make sense in this case uh, and it's not curbing gutter, uh, there won't be sidewalks, it's not designed for uh, you know, this type of thing, like on-street parking, That's it's not really designed for that type of use. You don't need it for a, a development this size, all the lots have off-street parking, all the, it's, it's a small enough uh, development traffic-wise that you could certainly just walk on the street when you need to. It's not a public thoroughfare. It's for yeah, it local traffic of the people that own yeah. the lots within the subdivision. Sure. Okay, that yeah. helps to kind of have an idea. So it won't, won't have urban <laughs> gutter. And I always just think about things like snow plows more than anything, especially on a development that's on a hill or a slope more than anything. Um, okay. So, yeah. questions. so then, Mike, just to reiterate, the the variances then that we are looking at are the the length, the um, 
dead end and well, it's private. The, it's, the length and the dead end are the same. <laughs> oh, that's uh, the same. Thing. It's we allow dead end streets, but not more than 500 feet in length. And this ah, one is okay. That's and then the fact that the road is private is the other aspect of that. Okay, so those are what we're looking at. Yeah. So then, with those in mind, those are the ones that we're looking at, and those are the ones that are the very similar to the, to the ones that we did to the Vesta Unchained. Yeah, both of those were included in that plan. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions at this point? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Would anyone like to make a motion for resolution 2024-26 subject to the variance? <laughs> so moved. I will second. All right. So my recommendation in modifying what's in your packet is to remove the whereas lot three, block two line, because that's specific to the setback variance. Okay. And then to remove the numbers five and six that are on the second page, which are both findings that are specific to the variance. We have to restate that? No. Nope. If you. you're all understanding that that's what you're voting on, that works. Okay. <coughs> Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments, Craig? No. Okay. No. And Bill, we're all right. All right. And with that, uh, in favor for resolution 2024-26, subject to the variance, Craig? Aye. Ben? Aye. Bill? Aye. Aye? Aye. Michael, sorry. All right. I knew what you meant. my way. Pass that one. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. yep, we'll look forward Thanks to sure. hearing what you come up with on the other variants. We'll get back to you with something tomorrow. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. All right. And now we'll move on to. Yeah, that. Oh, teeny tiny. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was looking for. So the. The plan unit development, that's a much simpler thing. We were just updating the language so that it matches what we have as our ordinances today. So we've reduced the size um, primarily because it's a more reasonable size to, to what we actually have within the city limits. Um, and then we increased the number of units because that would match with what our current um, uh, rules are related to how many houses you, you could have. So those are the only two things that are changed, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you, Mayor? You've got that look. I'm not totally tracking on this okay. one. I didn't when I came to your meeting either, and I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what's a planned unit development? Let's start with that. Okay, yeah. It's not a lot different than what we just did, where it's a subdivision of property. And rather than following the strict regulations of lot size and dimensions and use, even, it allows you to be more flexible in exchange for leaving some of the property open space. So it's designed for the type of property that has physical impediments or wetlands, or if you just have some of it that you want to preserve as open space, or if you want to focus all the development in one corner of a large piece of property and take advantage of the density for the whole area so you don't have to build as much infrastructure. We don't have any in Grammarie, which is why none of us are very familiar with it. One of the reasons we don't have any is because the minimum lot size to ask for a PUD is three acres, which is larger than a city block. And it's hard to acquire a piece that size. Uh, I think the other reason is the density that we allowed in a PUD was four units an acre, which was the same as if you just did a standard subdivision. So there's really no reason to go through it. When you do go through it, um, you can set the lots, dimensions, and sizes at whatever makes sense for your development. You can set the setbacks at whatever makes sense for your development. You can mix uses as well. 
Uh, it just allows a lot more flexibility. It does that at the cost of, in our ordinance anyway, plan deed developments are always a conditional use, meaning you have to go through a special permission process, just like we did here, where all of the issues around the development can be considered. So why did we change from three acres to two in the hopes that this will be useful to someone and that they will actually do it someday? Uh, why did we change from four units an acre to ten? Because four units was actually less density than we allowed before. Um, now that we've switched to 5,000 square foot lots in our R1 zone, ten is just a little bit more density than that uh, in exchange for open space. <laughs> so again, to try and make this language actually useful so that someone can build housing for us is what we'd like to see. Uh, what would be a couple <coughs> examples of a finished product out of this, or is it so variable that you can Oh, it's incredibly variable. So, but you can give a, I'll give a couple examples. Uh, if you had, say, uh, a two-acre parcel that was steeply sloped on the back half and utilities are on the front half, if you were to take that and do a typical subdivision like we just saw, you'd be required to bring utilities through the steeply sloped up to the top. You'd be required to build roads all the way through, uh, whereas you could instead do small uh, buildings that each have their own private ownership just around the building inside of a common space area, or you could do row houses or condominium building um, to, take, to, to build in the spot where it's easier to build and avoid the spot where it's more difficult. Another example might be if you were to take a city block downtown and you wanted to do a mixed-use development and you wanted to sell the units out separately, that you could do a planned unit development that specified exactly what the uses and, and sizes were going to be for each thing. And at, at two acres, you're still talking about a city block downtown, right? So it's probably not something we would see here, but that's a, a way that they're often used as well. Is the concept up to two acres? Minimum, minimum size. Minimum yeah. size. Yeah. Okay, it's right there. Now I see it. Take a minimum. So. so does this pertain to any of the current potential projects? It, it does. Not anyone that's made any applications, but there is somebody who's working on a development that is considering this as one of their options. Besides Petters? Yeah. Penners. Not Penner. Penners. Yeah. Penners. Yeah. John? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Which would explain <laughs> a block from here. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. So I'd expect yeah, yeah. to see an application uh, from them pretty quickly in the next couple of weeks. All right. Thank you. Well, I would make a motion then to approve updating the ordinance uh, for PUD standards 2024-01. Uh, second. I'll second. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Craig? <coughs> Anything? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I. Oh. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> you're no, I was going to let, let you do the roll call. <laughs> <laughs> but I will then. Yeah. Michael. Aye. Craig. Aye. Ben. Aye. Bill. Aye. Aye. As this is an ordinance, it'll be on your next agenda as well for a second reading, and then it'll need to be published before it actually becomes the rule of the land. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, Co-op pond project. Shane's excited. It's Shane's turn. <laughs> Come on down. <coughs> Hello. Be show and tell. So I am here to ask for permission to apply for grant funding to make the co-op pond bigger. 
more volume. I mean, vacuum. He's like, what am I hearing? Sorry, Shane. No worries. We'll Sorry. wait for the vacuum. <laughs> And so in my memo, I have summarized a feasibility study that we did last year and you may have read about in my weekly updates and then saw in an email that I sent, uh, the, the summary of the feasibility study is one of the only ways to improve the pond's performance is to make it bigger so it can hold more water because the downtown area, when it floods, the only drainage that we get is by that water seeping into the pond, flowing into the pond. And so the study explored a few different options for improving flooding. One of them was to add a dry well uh, in the beach gravel, so just like basically an empty space with a pipe that water could flow into. And in the memo you can see that didn't really improve flooding. The, that graph that looks kind of like a shark's fin, um, the water doesn't, the peak water level doesn't drop and the duration of flooding only is reduced by maybe an hour. Um, and then the other option was looked at is have a pipe that flows from the pond out into the lake. And the trouble, that, that really does reduce flooding, but the trouble with that is it's just gonna get clogged up by the lake. Um, the water down there, the beach is, is, you know, beach gravel, and that lake will just tear anything up that's been down there, as we can see from all the things that are down there. Um, so not a feasible option. So the only, the only real feasible option is to make the pond bigger. Uh, and so if we make the pond 50% bigger, uh, we can reduce the flooding, the peak water level, and we can reduce the duration that there is flooding. Um, we can reduce the duration by, by four hours or so um, for a two-year rain event. All these are for two-year rain events. So I'm asking for permission to apply for a, a grant to do this work, to expand the pond. And um, I guess also part of the project is to remove invasive species down by the pond and plant some, some native grasses and some native shrubs and make the area a little more of like an official access to the lake. And um, we've talked to some of the business owners from around there, Co-op and East Bay and Best Western, and they, they're all really supportive of this. Obviously it will make their, the, the, the pond area next to their businesses a little bit more of a, a green space as well as improve the pond. Uh, the pond's performance. <coughs> um, I guess I would just ask if there's any questions at this point. I have one question yeah. which is not directly related to the pond, but in your picture there is a rain garden that appears to butt up to the hotel. So would that be an option for them to do on their own? In because that's yeah. their piece. So in that picture, there are a lot of things. The the EOR is the um, is the group that we contracted with to do the study, and they they just <coughs> added like as many possible options to reduce flooding as we could. So sure. that rain garden, um, you know. It, I don't even know whose property that would be on, if that'd be on Best Western. Street right away. Street right away property, so. That's okay. probably the only thing in this picture that's outside of that circle that's in the right away that we control. Oh, okay. It was so close to the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they actually, Best Western did express some some thoughts on that. Be saying, you know, I don't know about this rain garden. It's really close to, I mean, there's like a, there's like a hotel room like right there. Mm -hmm. um, but what you see in that drawing is just all the Ideas. options that they could think of. Um, and Best Western could pursue some of the ones that are in the parking lot across First Avenue. Um, but the project that I'm talking about is only gonna be focused on the pond and the, the immediate like banks of the pond and and a little bit of, of landscaping t to access the, the area, um, the beach area. 
And I should also include that that access would be snowplow access as well, because Lenny stores his snow on, on, the, on the bank right. by the pond. So that's been included in this study. So the right of way then is, is technically county? The first street is ours, first, first avenue okay. is ours, Broadway is county. There's a street that goes out into the lake. Yeah, first street continues straight east to the beach. I just happened to see it said city owned parcel with the pink line and then so I thought, well, is it not cities? But it's just that because it's a we, yeah, we actually own a piece of property there um, and it's on the east side of First Avenue. So the pond as it exists today is mostly in the street right away of First Avenue East. But we also own a piece of property that is adjacent to that beach side. And then there's a chunk that's private south of us as well. Oh, and the, yes, the bottom half, is that, so that goes par out. part of Jack Stone's then? The I, know lower he, I know that he does own one piece down there, but I don't know if it's that. Um, the piece he owns is on the lake side. It's just like a little triangle. It it's it just gives him the access, right? Purely a piece of beach. Yeah. yeah. When we had those meetings about the harbor, he said it's just this access piece. Okay. So the the where where all the stuff is kind of parked and stored on the south side of Stone Harbor, that city land there, which they have a license agreement with us to use. Yeah. We own that lot. And you see that they've included rain gardens and a path there. And, um, something we could pursue later, but really not part of this grant grant application. Okay. You really just focused on, like you said, on the pond. Yeah. Okay. Right. Does, does this end up How much does this end up being an erosion issue like the rest of it? Like if you put in the net, the, the native, uh, you know, the plantings and whatnot, are they going to be the victims like some of um, <laughs> Best Western and East Bays? So the planting will enhance the protection against erosion but it won't be without maintenance. And you can ask Scott at Best Western, they do a lot of maintenance on that pond down there. We did, we got the full scoop. Okay, cool, <laughs> yeah. And so, from East Bay. So there will be some maintenance there, um, but you know, we, have, we have a few stakeholders that are interested in seeing this area be improved in the co-op and East Bay and Best Western. And so, um, you know, they, they, there are opportunities to partner with with stakeholders to maintain the pond and the native grasses and pull the tansy and et cetera. It's not even like, not like a weeding event, but we already know that Best Western lost a lot of the work that they did and so did East Bay with natural planning. So I just wondered, if, could this just literally be slowly washed away? Mm. Or is that not? The planting part would be more focused on like if you can picture the pond, and I wish I had a picture, the, the tansy kind of grows around the full perimeter of the pond. And I think that's where the planting would be, is on the pond side of the bank. That part of the bank erosion, we're not focused on the lakeside erosion because, you know, the lake's gonna do what it wants with that beach and, but the pond side, the planting would prevent the pond from like eroding in on itself and, and deforming. Because a little bit of this is widening the pond on the lake side, but then also filling in a little bit of the pond on that co-op side to provide them with a little more space there um, for loading and receiving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so it would push a little bit more on that edge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe it widens towards the lake and then it it gets deeper. Okay. Yeah, I you know it's all great and the plannings are great. I just like, are we going to run into a problem after it's done where all of a sudden it's getting washed away? You know what I mean? Or not really? I don't know. Well, we don't really know either. Um, <laughs> you can't make any sort of conclusions when it comes to the East Bay side of the lake very much. No. Yeah. But my observations now are that there isn't any erosion that is on the down slope towards yeah. the pond that okay. the lake is doing. I mean, there's a lot of water moving 
on the north side of the lake from the or the <coughs> north side of the pond from the lake, but less uh, erosion where the pond actually is. So yeah. can't. I mean, that, we couldn't. I mean, we're not going to spend a lot of en engineering money to to f make sure it doesn't ever erode. We probably will have to do some things, and and we're going to be out there digging it out from time to time too with our excavators. So yeah. Okay. And the designs will include a way to make it easier to do that maintenance so that the pond stays as effective as it can be to drain the parking lot. So this is like three parts, like better drainage for the parking lot, easier to maintain, and it gets a little bit prettier and more of a green space, more of like an official, if you can picture it kind of walking down First Street and it's just kind of beach there, beach gravel, there would be a little bit of landscaping involved here to make more of like an official gateway access to the lake. And then there's those boulders that are kind of sitting out there as well, um, and picnic tables, and then there's sometimes <coughs> snow on the picnic tables. But what can you do about sometimes that? Beach on the picnic sometimes tables. Sometimes beach on the picnic tables. <laughs> yes, they're just yeah. submerged yeah. in the gravel. Yep. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other questions? Or otherwise, I can bring up the budget for this project, which is different than what I put in my memo. Ah, okay. And I'll share a screen here that has the budget for the project. So originally, you know, EOR gave us a, I shared it. EOR gave us a projected uh, estimate for the, for the project. Um, I did, it says right here. <laughs> See, stop shooting and hide. I'm in the meat. Yeah, you go ahead. He's sharing with a different meeting. Yeah. It's really right. I'm in full screen mode. And my computer is hard to use because the screen doesn't work. Can we try a verbal exercise and see if that works? Can't share your screen. Yeah, all right, so never mind the sharing. Never mind. Never mind. So the hang on, here it comes. S no, it's we had to do is turn to walk away from it. And, yeah, I can't see that. Yeah, you know, no one can see it. I was told you had screens on your tables. We do. We do. They do. don't work. <laughs> well, wait, has anyone tried it this time? Oh, I guess I didn't try it. Turning it on. Oh, you think this time we'll? Uh, no. Oopsie. Oh, oh man. Is it? Can I open? This was my fear with sharing an Excel spreadsheet. And I did voice that, that fear. Where? Right. OK. So anyway, the original project estimation was done by EOR, and that's the number I put in the memo. The more accurate estimation is higher because I reached out to a local excavator, and he gave me a, an estimate to double, pretty much double two through seven. Sorry. Is it plugged in? I can't oh. even hit a button. I'm so sorry. <coughs> Everyone's Thanks. seeing it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. so the the estimate from the excavator was to double the unit costs of items two through seven. And then the estimate from the from EOR to engineer the project because the um, the feasibility study didn't come with, you know, engineering plans for exactly how to excavate the pond, um, was to double the engineering costs. So the, the, the actual estimated cost of the project is $144,000, which is, I know, significantly higher than $96,000. Um, but this should more accurately reflect what we think the project will cost. So the grant has a 10% match which we can include in kind donations to. So um, I added into the budget, you know, 100 hours of grant coordination. So that'd be my time. Um, so $14,400 match would be, you know, 10% of the total cost. Um, minus $2,500 is, is about $12,000. So that'd be the the match that we would be responsible for in a hundred and forty four thousand dollar project. Wait, 
Sorry, what was that number again? So the thousand. Twelve thousand. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. That's about as good a leverage as we're going to get. Yeah. And this grant, you probably had in here, now I've forgotten. When is it due and when will it be known? So the grant uh, is due tomorrow. <laughs> of course it is. That's why we're here. <laughs> um, okay. And there's a story to that. So we didn't have the feasibility study until maybe March-ish or whenever I sent it to you. Like, that's when I got it. And... And then kind of pulling this thing together, I mean, this is, so we're running right up against the deadline for the grant is due tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, Better than tomorrow at 8. A.M.? <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, that this meeting is the day before is really the only reason that we're talking, right? Because if it, if it hadn't worked out that way, then all right, forget about it. But since it's possible, since the timeline exists. Anyway, we wouldn't hear back from the grant for 90 days, so okay. mid-July. All right. Okay. And then the timeline for implementation is like three years, so okay. we would have plenty of time to implement the grant, and that means, you know, getting the design work done and then getting bids for excavation. Yeah. And so we probably won't be doing it this summer. That would be a pretty safe oh, bet. Yeah. Definitely. Not doing <coughs> oh, it please, no. <coughs> No, I mean, it's, it's going to be challenging as it is. Um, okay. And so since you asked, I have already filled out the application. It's all pretty much done. Um, so it's not like, you know, I'm going to do a min all nighter here and <laughs> wait on your word. All. It okay. All right. <sighs> Anyone like to make a motion for the grant application for the co-op pond improvement? Would that be a good way to say that? Sure, I'd, I would make that motion. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> but it's hard to find my mouse on my screen. There it is. If we had a nickel for every time, right? <coughs> Kick me out there. Okay. Oh, I didn't hear Sorry. that. Okay. I, I said I will make that motion, meaning I made that motion. Because you already said it, might as well just run back. Second. <laughs> I will second that motion. Thank you. All right. Uh, any further questions or comments from anyone? Bill? I guess I've got a comment. I got an email from the concerned citizen. I think this addresses that. His concern was overall how that looked down there, and I went down and looked. Um, he was concerned about the amount of sand and salt, litter, cigarette butts and stuff that were finding their way onto the beach, into the lake ultimately. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think by making that something that has more capacity, maybe a source of pride, you take care of it better, yeah. that's going to help. And I think not having a direct outlet into the lake is probably going to help it uh, infiltrate and soak and filter better. Great. Okay. Anyone else? Craig? No? Okay. All right. Um, no. Yeah, the only question I have is, I don't have a map in front of me. How are you going to, how do you build that pond 50% bigger? You can't go west. Everything, everything east is beach gravel. Um, I'm just concerned about the vegetation take and how it's going to, are you going to get rid of the access then, because I, I, I'm not looking at a map right now. Are you getting rid of the access of the street where we now currently push snow? No. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so how are you making the pond? Yeah. Where are you going with this pond to make it 50% bigger? So the, the like. Towards the lake or towards East Bay? It goes a little bit, a little bit towards East Bay, but I think most of the volume comes from making the pond deeper 
It is deeper. only a few feet deep. We had it surveyed uh, last May as a part of the feasibility study, and the the guy with the surveyor he was able to walk through the whole bottom of the pond and take survey points. It's like three feet deep at the deepest. So oh, okay. most of the volume comes from making it deeper, and then it does get a little bit closer to the lake, really not much, um, but then slightly filled in on the co-op side. So as Ben said, it kind of heads a little bit more toward the northeast. Towards the lake. Yeah. Yeah, and towards um, Best Western, but certainly not like blocking the access at all or, you know, really moving up. I guess that's what you call the right of way. Yeah. yeah. At all. It retains its like oval, oblong shape. It's, it's okay. mostly just a, a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. Okay. And this grant application is for the total amount of the project? Yep, full project. Okay. All right. Any questions I have? All right. Uh, all in f favor, Ben. Aye. Bill? Aye. Aye. Michael? Aye. Craig? <coughs> Aye. All right. There you go. Thank you. You did. You Thanks, Shane. No Thank need you, Shane. for an all nighter. You'll be ready to roll. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Now move on to the City Hall uh, liquor store budget and um, adding to that the public restroom discussion. So after our two meetings, I asked Mike to first of all give us an overview of how some of the different costs were coming through and then now we've added back on to finalize the public restroom discussion from our March. 20, no, that was the special meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, 13 plus 7, the tw 20, 20th. You can do basic math. That's why 27 was off, wasn't it? That's why I was, had that all. Sorry. All right, so did you want to, pre I have a few questions on you, but maybe you just want to overview you the I'll give a super quick overview and then I'd love to take questions okay. so this the expense side of this budget is including project related expenses that we have not incurred yet so we haven't paid these this is money we we will have to expend to make this project happen so we really haven't spent a lot yet on it because it hasn't really quite started but we have paid for some design work that's not included in this budget that's probably the most significant piece uh, there are some things on here that we know what they're going to cost. There are some that we're making assumptions that are pretty safe about, and then there's some that we really don't know or we don't have to decide yet, and we're including what, what I'm calling an allowance in the budget, just a placeholder that, that can change. Uh, that, that's the expense side. Um, the project sources, where are we going to get the money from side? Uh, this is mostly things that that we just know. Um, uh, the only one that we don't really can't say we know for sure is the building operations savings, but it's a pretty safe estimate based on what it costs us to operate City Hall that we're not going to be spending this year. Uh, and then there is a couple of other spots if we want to talk about what happens if we need more money for this project. So. I won't say any more about it, and please just ask me questions about what's here or what isn't that you want to see or what else. Okay. <coughs> well, I'll get started since I have my little post-it note. So staying on the total project cost side of the sheet, you have the um, the green roof grant for 150000 <coughs> No, I know we talked about this as a sort of a placeholder, something we could do in the future. You know, we we could think about it. They gave us an estimate. The right. the so the total project um, <laughs> construction costs, and that's on the first spreadsheet, mm -hmm. at eight million six hundred and fifty thousand, is one hundred and fifty thousand more than our guaranteed maximum price with McGough. 
So the original estimate to do the whole green roof was bigger than that. Um, it was not 150, but it was more like 250 or 300,000. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, we have access to potentially 150. So that's what we would consider doing. Uh, so that it's built into both sides of this budget that we are doing it. The 150 is being spent on the 8650 and there's 150,000 in revenue to offset it on the other side. Okay. I thought our construction costs didn't have the green roof in it because yeah. it was something we were going to do later. That's they why I was wondering why yeah. you had the grant in. Okay, so that answered that one. Thank you. I didn't realize it was baked in there. Um, so the design, wait a minute, no, I'm on expenses. Never mind, make sure I'm done on this one side, not to bounce back and forth. Um, all right, so then if I look on the expense side, um, the 4,500 and the temporary storage is? That's just rent payments for temporary liquor store. Then what currently the liquor store pays to this, or was <laughs> until this month, paying the city monthly rent of $3,250, which was inclusive of all expenses. It's my understanding that now it's 4,500 plus utilities, so it's a little bit more. But is the 3250 somewhere put back in? I mean, in other words, it's not like we weren't paying rent. Yeah, like store. Store, uh, store, yeah. right? We've got a net difference here. There, there surely is. Um, I didn't include it in this analysis. Uh, and the other thing I didn't include on the other side of the ledger is we don't really have a picture for what our liquor store revenue <coughs> is going to look like. I mean, I think they'll probably do fairly similar to what they did in the space we were in. But since that's an unknown, I, I mean, I'm trying to be conservative about it. And then this is the one case where I didn't include the potential expense of lost revenues, and I didn't include the potential savings of we're not paying that rent payment to ourselves from the money. Mm -hmm. Kim's also brought up a time or two, our general fund includes a $200,000 transfer from the liquor fund to city, the general fund that uh, typically in a year we, we don't have any trouble paying that. As a matter of fact, we've had as much as 250 or 275,000 available to make that payment. And ha that's how we've built our fund balance so that we can afford to put a million dollars cash towards this. But that's not necessarily been the case with COVID in this past couple of years. It's been a lot tighter. Um, we may not be able to cover that. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't include any additional liquor funds in this like we're already we're pretty close on that so the the excess funds we have in the liquor fund right now might need to be used as as a savings account if our revenues are down a little bit i guess sometimes for me this gets difficult because i would think of the liquor store as its own thing Here's the rent, here's my inventory, here's my sales, here's my insurance, all that. And now we're kind of blending it in like these, con like this rental cost. Well, they've always had a rental cost. And I would have assumed that would just come out of their income like it does now. When you talk about rental car, I think this is just what we're paying for the Beaver House. Right, right. but the but the liquor store was Pay paying rent, the uh, city. Sure, I understand. Rent. Yeah, uh, so on on the source side, right, the projected yeah. source, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and, not in there. Right. and then so sometimes to put a, what I would call a liquor store specific expense in here that they already pay now. I don't know. It's, it's I would have like kind of isolated, but I I mostly just want to everyone to realize it is a net difference, and I have no idea. What utilities are, but um, it's about twelve hundred. Well, it, let's just say twelve fifty more per month, really, than what they're already paying. It's not just well here actually with the four hundred, it'll be forty nine hundred because the temporary storage. But anyways, so it's more than twelve. But um, all right. Uh, rest of questions. Um. 
the signage is that just for what the for the liquor store's new building the there's not uh, McGoff does not have in their contract to install signs for us <coughs> and LHB's design has space for signs and wiring for signs but we don't we didn't ask them to design signs so we're doing that separately that's what I thought okay. is that also the city hall sign too city hall sign is included in the project so there's just lettering on the building that says city hall all right so this is truly just the liquor store mm -hmm. okay that was my question on that one um Oh, do we need to include in here moving the charger stations? Or is that part of something in here? It's actually included in McGough's guaranteed maximum price. Okay. We'll probably do some of that work ourselves. And then, it, so we'll spend that money ourselves and, and get a savings from what we didn't ask our electric contractor to do. Okay. So you'll, all right, Ned. Is that very much money? It'll be a few thousand. Okay, so it's, it's small. It's small. And, and okay. there's also no, I haven't put any amount in here for the work we're currently doing to relocate the electric lines in the area either. Mm -hmm. And that's closer to what you were talking about for the liquor store is the electric utility would do that for any project, right? We would, if we're in the way, we need to move our stuff. Like when MnDOT does a road project, tell us to move our stuff, we just have to do it. So. I'm not including that cost in here. It's also not significant. It would be a few thousand, maybe. <laughs> significant amount of work for the guys, though. All right. And then last time we talked, and I had signed that contract for scanning and shredding. Is that in here? I did not include that in here. Uh, if you want to look at that as a part of this project, you, you could certainly make that case. Uh, I also think you can make the case that it's a completely separate item. Mm -hmm. Well, because yeah, it's something. Be something that you would we probably would have done it eventually anyway. Yeah. Uh, the, and it's hard to do the math on it because we definitely built a smaller building because we did it. it you know, we don't. We did not build a room to put all that paper back into, or any space to to accumulate paper from here on out. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's fine. I just wanted to know then that that is taken care of and not another thing we're needing to think about. Yeah, it's and we're getting our reports back right now about the data. Be interesting to make use of that now. Yeah. When are we going to start talking about some of the signage for the liquor store? Um, like the can. Because I mean, it takes a while to build and make and. Right, design. I mean, I think we're still working on kiosks, right? Well, we're, we're going to do it a little different than that. So <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that project for right. this one. No, I mean, like I'm not out. trying to be smart about yeah. it. We are, right? No, you're, okay. you, you are very right. Yeah, the, um, where we're at right now, let's say it that way first, and then we can get into the when will we talk more about it. Is sure. We've got um, our, a local contractor that we're working with to do some logo designing and talk about names and kind of the preliminary work and we've looked at some sign ideas cool. so we, we've started talking about it already um, it when do we need to order it I mean it'll certainly be months before there's a space to install it uh, but I'd like to think that we'll have the signs and, and we'll actually do have McGough install them for us because they'll be ready to go and they okay. can just put them up great is the rotating can part of that? Yeah, we like We're working on that. We like okay. Craig's rotating can. <laughs> we thought maybe we'd test it out at the Beaver House first, but so that fish is in the way, and I kind of like that fish. So, what that look with the partial fish in the can on the back? Yeah. I don't know. You missed that one, but when we talked about signs, Bill Craig had a great idea of a rotating beer can on the top. For which then we could get various beer companies to want to wrap their beer and pay us even more money. The architect didn't like that idea. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> they really didn't like that. They didn't think <laughs> no. that was They didn't even more. laugh about well, it. Well, we no. thought it was pretty no. good, too. <laughs> we told them we're here to, s to sell things. So, anyways. But that's kind of where we keep, just so you know, that's where we keep talking about is beer signs. All right. Um, 
Those are my <coughs> questions. So, furniture, fixtures, equipment. That's a an allowance, right? Meaning, the architect has said you could use this number as an estimate for what it's going to cost. But it's based on their furniture plan for the building, which we may or may not <coughs> want to build day one to include all the things that they've planned for it. Uh, and, and we know for a fact we don't intend to furnish some of the spaces the way they've currently just drawn them into the plan. So uh, it's it, we could end up deciding we want more and we're going to decide to spend more, or we could say well, this is a place where we're going to save some money and, and we don't need to have four or five workstations in the central city hall office right away because we don't need them. So that's when it's, there's some risk involved in that number still because we don't have any design or, or numbers from people to provide it. It's an estimate. Oh, that was one question. Is this just city hall or is this and the liquor store shelving or whatever it needs? And it's the whole building. Whole building, yeah. okay. Okay, that was helpful. Almost forgot to ask. Do they have they they have to buy more additional coolers, right? There are the, all the coolers like the ones we have now are built into the project cost. Okay. Oh, so that's not part of what so the liquor store would need. That's to not in the FF and E number. It's in the eight point five million. Okay, so the liquor store would be what shelving? Yeah. Okay. Point of sale yeah. counters. Mm -hmm. Shelving okay. for the product and a sampling area, office furniture for the mm -hmm. one office. Okay. Okay. The liquor, the liquor store should be easy to estimate what the shelving is going to cost in there. I mean, that's not very laid out of drawing. Am I not following on that? Yeah, I, I'm sure they just did look at a, this many linear feet of shelving and put a number to it. Right, right. You're just going to pick out what type of shelving you need for the bottles and that kind of thing, and how high you're going to go. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I didn't include in project sources that you could consider is that the bond proceeds that we ended up with um, included about a half a million dollars of uh, extra money and we used that extra money to have less debt so every penny of that we borrowed less money instead of took extra money uh, which means that in the future we're gonna have lower payments than we would have had uh, which is great that's good news and I think that was a good way to, to use that money uh, you could potentially do some kind of analysis to say how much of that is a you know present value of that savings today and included in the source side too um, as an additional source of more revenue if you needed it but that's pretty complicated so I just didn't want to sure. put a number in there that I wasn't didn't have a lot of faith in So why is there 750000 of additional available in the general fund? I'm not going to share my screen with you. I thought about doing it. But every month we get a report from Kim that shows a lot of different information. And one of them is the report of all of our fund balances that we have. And the, it's over $4 million in the general fund right now. That's after the million and a half is out for the project that we've already committed to it. Uh, and we probably want to keep at least a million of that for um, cash flow purposes, maybe I would say even more. Uh, and we've already set aside quite a bit of it too, probably about two million of it in other accounts like the Parks Fund, for instance. Their savings account is included in that $4 million number. So there's C there's CIP or whatever. Yeah, yeah. they've got okay. some set-asides. So we've got a couple of other set-asides like that too. That 
So that 750 is what I think is a number we could safely take out of there without affecting our cash flow needs or without affecting our other set asides that we've got. Uh, not that we need to or want to because we're going to have other things we want to use it for, but it's there right now, and if we decide we need it, it's there right now. And then why the electric fund? We, we've left the utility funds out of the capital front end of this project. We plan on using electric, water, and sewer funds to help make the debt payments because this building is their building too. This is their main office as well. Uh, but they haven't upfronted any of the money like the liquor fund did or that the general fund did. Uh, you could certainly make an argument that it's appropriate for them to also upfront money like those other funds do. Uh, the water and sewer funds are not in a position to do that. But the liquor fund has, or the electric fund has a little that they could if we needed to. Does this, do we as a city, do we have a fiscal policy that talks about our fund balance in relation to our levy or, or our expenditures? I mean, I know the county has visited that in the past and I wasn't sure. We've never written one. Uh, we've talked about it and we have one in practice. And it's in particular in our general fund because our revenue is very seasonal. Uh, we've got two payments a year of taxes, right? You know, there's three, but it's mostly two. Uh, there's the one little catch up at the end. And then there's quite a bit that shows up when the rec park is open. So there's a good six months when there's not a lot of revenue activity going on, which is our reasoning for saying we want about 50% of our annual expenses set aside just for cash flow purposes. I mean, you know, that's about a million and a half or so. Million two, million three, somewhere in there. That the uh, other funds, we we don't have the same um, stringent needs for. They they've got much different revenue streams to them. So, like for instance, the liquor fund, we don't need to have fifty percent of that set aside for cash flow purposes because they're getting revenue every month, even though it's less in the winter time. We're still getting some. The library fund gets two payments from us, one from, from us, one from the county on the tax schedule. And they don't necessarily have to have any set aside for cash flow purposes because we do have some set aside and they're just small enough that we can eat that bounce if we need to. Um, we could certainly talk about developing a policy if that's something you're interested in. I just wasn't sure if we'd had one. Yeah. It's helpful to know what that baseline is or yeah. where we arrive but at that. Keeping 50%, that's <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's tricky. And it was a few state auditors ago where they thought maybe cities were holding on to too much yeah. and that maybe the state needed to take a hold of some of that as a part of their revenue stream. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to be careful with our <laughs> With our money, Somebody's with our citizens' it. funds, and, and yeah, we're going to not necessarily be treated well for that. That thankfully didn't go anywhere. Oh, good. Well, the city isn't any different than any other business owner here. The seasonality yeah. hits yeah. everyone, and you just have to know how to Save have it. your yep. cash sitting there day. ready. Yep. <laughs> or your line of credit is signed. Mm. <laughs> and hope it isn't a late ice out. Great. <sighs> <coughs> Did we get there? Anyone else have any questions about any of this? Craig, did you have any other questions? Or? No. Oh, all right. We, I mean, like, the heat pump grant, I mean, we think we know that that's coming, right? We don't, we don't really know. Nobody's received any money yet. That one is a fairly safe assumption. Okay. But yeah. Do we? I mean, do we have it? No. Right. Okay. But you mean safe in that if we apply for it, we will get it? Or you, as far I if sure. we, I mean, we think that we we know that we qualify for this money. Okay. So there's no reason that we wouldn't get it, but. All right. It's a new program for the federal government. It's a giant program. Yeah. And not the hundred. Nobody's got any money yet. But we've taken the steps that I think we need to take, which is bring in expertise to ensure that we do it right and get that money. I agree. 
I'm sorry, my head, my head went back to the green roof grid oh, for yeah. a second. Yeah, well, yeah. Same, we're same or similar, right? Pumps. It is the same, but we can also just not buy it. Whereas with the yeah. heat pumps, we're tied in now. We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Now I'm tracking better. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, because the roof deal, whatever, yeah. we can wait for another day or however we want to do that. Um, do we have to, is yeah. that a special, a certain time or a certain source you'd go for that? <coughs> or you already have it? We're working with soil and water. Okay. So that's something that they've built into their funding budget. And so I think we could say we already have it. But again, there's details to be worked out. Okay. So everyone, temperature check. Do we feel better about the 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 budget for this project? Any still outstanding questions? Mm, not for me. I'm, I mean, we knew it was going to be expensive, and, but we're doing good. I mean, as far as this looks. Okay. Oh. You say allowance were the, okay. And then, so did you, this is the final quote on the asbestos, or are we still? That's the final quote. Yeah, okay. It's a quote. Mm -hmm. So if it ends up being more complicated than what, based on the assumptions we provided them, we just okay. don't know yet. But it's happening now, so we'll know very quickly. I was going to say they got in this week. I didn't see if they were here today, but oh, <laughs> it's okay. first thing on my list tomorrow. I know that. All right. I'm just curious because I know you said it was kind of moving along now, yeah. finally. <coughs> so, all right. Okay. All right. <coughs> well, with that, then, uh, we will go back to the, <coughs> excuse me, motion for the, uh, this, the motion for the, let me find my sheet so I say this correctly. The motion before us, which uh, Ben motioned to table, <laughs> was for the, which of the options that Dave presented us for the uh, ADA compliant trailer, for which he brought three or four. <coughs> You mean originally? No, the second time after we asked him to come back and he said I can find that um, in better time frame. And then there were, I'm going to pull it up here. There were, uh, <coughs> one had, one had more stalls with larger capacity for storage of water and waste. Right. One had less tiles but less capacity. And then there was uh, then obviously the two different time for the two different costs and then the um, time frame could be met with those unlike before. And I think the one with the three stall was ended up being less money than the first three stall that which it is now that I'm like my numbers than what he'd presented before and it was also more timely. So we really had, as I recall, like two in the end that seemed like they were both that they would be timely and we'd be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that gets us back to the fact that that was our special meeting and I didn't see that in my list of agenda pieces for no, 320. Did he, he, did we get an e-version of that or just a handout that day from, you weren't. It was a handout. Without. Because the e-version that you pulled up was from the week prior. You were looking at the original, right. original right. one. And we were looking at, yeah. yeah. It's not available in the timeline that you. Because yeah. today I was looking to try to find what Dave gave yeah, us. I think it was paper copy. But now I realize, okay, so that's why I'm not finding it. And. <laughs> it really also took notes. 
Well, those are the two. Yeah. Did he give you a I'm looking. copy at all? I'm sure we have one. Are you looking too? Uh, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> he didn't email it either, did he? I can't. It's not worth going through my emails, right? Yeah. Pardon? He showed up with copies. Copies. Okay. Well, if, if we want to go back in time and revisit that, yeah, the, there was one ADA compliant three stall that was 86, 85, somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. And there was the only bigger one worth looking at was the one that was sitting on somebody's lot, and it was about 110. Yeah. Mm-hmm. six. Yeah. And I think the hard part for me was listening and trying to read what would work best for Dave and the advantages of having the larger t capacity and how much did that matter and that's where it's like could somebody weigh in on this and and, and like he said it's all a it's we're making estimates all the way around as far as how much usage and yeah deal. and we already kind of float that demand with extra porta potties mm -hmm. so if there was if we bought a trailer that had three units it's very likely we're adding porta potties that three units replaces what we had in city hall right now mm -hmm. and we when city hall was being used we added porta potties so it seems so the, that's i would assume we're going to continue to do that if we if we buy a trailer that has three stalls if we buy a trailer that has six or seven it's an unknown it, it's very likely that that can handle most of the demand, but we, if if it doesn't, then we will add porta potties. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I sat here trying to decide how much would it be just to have the porta potties. And your first was seven to nine porta potties was porta potties. Sounds like we're talking about little kids. Okay. Okay. Um, so nineteen thousand. So I just trying to like divide that in half. So like ten grand then still of. PD's potties? Yeah. Would be. So, what I'm including in the allowance budget here is additional costs based on Dave's estimate of what would be additional if we don't offer a trailer. So, that goes away if we do buy a trailer. And potentially, what the math you're doing, Tracy, maybe half of what we spend now on porta potties could potentially go away as well. Oh, I see. Oh. All right. I thought this was an addition to if that's the only thing we did. But it shouldn't be assumed that there's any savings per se, right? Because you have cl cleaning, right? I mean, there's stuff that they have. And that that's baked yeah. into this. Baked into that he included his, that. He's in got that. all oh, those into those cut. figures. Sure. Yeah. 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 I understand. Yeah. yeah. And then, I don't know. I mean, and, and Dave was very good. He gave us the details on this. Like, because obviously we're not cleaning city hall public restrooms this summer. And then he talked about the split. That's the city staff did one shift and the mm -hmm. park did the other yeah. shift. But in theory, there's some time not being spent that gets shifted. Right? Well, the, yeah, the, the tricky part is we don't know how long it'll take to clean a trailer. But right now they're cleaning the entire space that is the public restroom at <coughs> City Hall. And we have staff that does that twice a day in the summertime and, you know, potentially more if needed. So that staff is still going to be doing other things downtown in the summertime, picking up trash and, and, and uh, the regular rounds. Uh, if we don't have any restrooms, then we will have some savings of those hours that won't be spent on cleaning. And if we do, uh, it might be a wash or it might be just a little bit more and we just can't really say for sure yet. <coughs> well, and in general, they're not cleaning a city hall period, right? I mean, I don't know how much time they spend to clean your work area or the the rest of it. Yeah, that's different completely. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how that fit into it either. But anyways, all right, so... We totally confused ourselves, or are we kind of yeah, so having a memory jog from last, from yeah, I think that the Dave's handout. So the the three stall, it has only one of those is ADA. Is that right? And that's true for all the options. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. So 
And that three would be a one for one for what we have right now. Is that essential? Well, about the same. About the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, now what? And I. That runs about eighty-five. For purchase, right? Yeah. And then. And that one did not have the buyback option, I don't believe. Oh, yeah. It wasn't right. offered by the company. Right. I mean, one. I'd like to well, think okay, there's I, a secondary I, I, I market I got you. Okay. for any of them. Yeah. But the buyback option sure felt nice. It did, but I think when we were... Surface level, yeah. I think, though... The buyback, the, the buyback was 107980 Yeah. Okay. It's uh, 88 plus 6 in stock. The uh, 26 foot 88 plus 9 is 128,000. The 16 foot 88 plus 2 is 86,000. That said, was available mid May. Right. Thank you, Craig. You must have your paper copy. You I just went back to March 20th. <laughs> notes. No, that's oh. my notes, actually. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. The minutes. The minutes. Brilliant. Very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew we wrote those down for some reason. <laughs> Who would think? <coughs> okay. No, it's all right. That I can pull up. And the other trailer is kind of out because that has a fourteen-week order time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The very first one, right? The very first is three stall for ninety-five to eighty. No, it's eighty-eight plus two. Yeah, it has a fourteen-week. Order time. Page six of my packet. Oh, oh yeah, we have all. Thank you. Now I see it. Biggest day. Okay, so we do actually have this in front of us. Wait. Page six of the packet. Page six. This packet. Yeah, it's got yeah. the minutes. It's in the minutes. Because Sleuth Schulte found it <laughs> right away. Sherlock. <laughs> You've done it again. All right. So now we can. And then, yes, yeah, as, as they said, the promotional buyback. So, um, <coughs> yeah, and we went around, like, could you get 40% of it back? And what, so what would be out of pocket or? Yeah, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't assume 80% for sure. We know that restrooms and everybody that's downtown knows how hard they get worked. And, right. and we experience vandalism and other things. So we'll definitely, th it'll be a long summer for this trailer. But we are on it twice a day every day. And, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, we do our best to keep it in good condition. What's it worth at the end? I don't know. What, we may not even want to sell it. That's the other thing. We may decide this was great having this trailer and we're keeping it so yeah I mean and that gets back to our original discussion we talked about this years ago trying to brainstorm some way to you know in location piece uh, do this so it it has it, it isn't a concept just because of this summer um, but oh, that's sweet it's all right, so that was three, not six. Oh, I see. Oh, why did I? Th I thought the 85 was a three stall, but you're it's, right. Well, it's two plus two. one. Yeah, it's three stall. So it's two regular and one 88. I'm sorry, oh. I meant ADA plus three, but never mind. Oh, I, I didn't. Maybe that's what I didn't read right even from the first time. So the, even in Dave's first option, it was just a total of three altogether. Was mm -hmm. that it? Okay. That's just, I didn't yeah. get it right. Okay. The buyback one is an ADA plus six. Mm -hmm. With a 225 freshwater gallons and 600 gray water gallons. Yeah. That's how that one was specced out. Yeah. If it's still in stock, I don't know. 
father's side. This was on March, yeah. March 20th. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, we're asking. Yeah. I don't know the the ADA plus six. I do like that that one has the buyback written in that it has the larger capacity, which um, from the pumping person can't remember, um, was sounded like that would feel better to know that you have more time, I guess, between pumps. So that's a savings. Um, I mean, it's more to clean. So there's that. This conversation is, is at its core, though, about what level of service you want to provide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really what it's about. And yeah, it'll take more cleaning time and it'll take more maintenance and it'll cost more to buy it, but you're providing a higher level of service than that's typically how it works. So yeah. that's what I think the decision is in front of you is what's the right service level to provide. I, I think another another thing to think about is regardless of what, if we do anything like this, I think you're still gonna. I don't. I, mean, I don't know. You're still gonna probably need to place extra porta potties. Um, I'm not saying that we're losing a uh, a lot of bathroom because of tearing down city hall because we're only losing two stalls on the women's and one on the men's. I get that, but. Um, you know, with the extra people coming into town, um, you know, I, I I don't know if we're meeting the demand already. You know, I don't, we probably aren't. Maybe it's because of locations, placement of the peach bodies. I don't know. We only have so many places we can put these things to try to keep them uh, somewhat inconspicuous, but yet available to extra travelers, extra traffic, that kind of thing. So just also keep in mind, that I'm keeping in my mind anyway, that this may not solve our problem right. totally, you know. Yeah. That's how I think about it. And like I said, Mike brought up an important thing that I've been thinking about is personnel to keep it clean and to give the public clean restrooms. Because um, this is something we're going to maintain, not pizza parties. Right. Now we're in the business already. Like we do this. We we own four purpose-built bathhouses that we maintain right Correct. now with our staff. Correct. So. Correct. So we're not starting Correct. from scratch on this. Yeah. This is new to do the trailer. But Right. Well, I mean they hit the nail on the head. It is really about a level of service. And I said this from the beginning, so this is repetitive. But as long as our economy is, what, 95, 90% based on tourism and it's seasonal and it affects our city's cash flow along with all, most all businesses, we need to, I believe, support our local businesses. It's their busiest time of year. They don't and shouldn't have to. I mean, short of a gas station, I don't think there is an ex in a restaurant. I don't think there's an expectation of a public restroom, and certainly not of multiple availability. Um, and what they do for our community, I think we can <coughs> back them on this, and, and that gets back to what um, Mike just said. And we've certainly heard from them tonight. Um, and they put, you know, it's quite clear um, that Tyler put some effort into this, mm -hmm. um, not just simply writing a letter, but going out and reaching out to people. And other um, long-term business owners have, have done the same. I think we need to be supportive of what they do for our community and for the fact that they give to us, people living here, a much, much appreciated um, 
It elevates our standard of living compared to many small towns in this state if you were to go and try to live in them. We have amenities and restaurants and shopping that many small towns of our size just do not have. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's between them and the tourists that make it possible. And they pay a large share of you know, helping on our tax rolls. And, if, and so it is their money and they're asking us to spend it in this way. So that's my thought on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think for, you know. I think they're the thing that the city has been really good about is is budgeting. I mean, I think that is one of the things that stands out too. It's not you know we do have tourists coming in and all of that, but we've been very good about using our money, and I think that that's been part of the the hesitation. But in terms of the the service, I, yeah, I mean, just thinking about what Craig was saying, you know, the the one for one is maybe not. The level we need, and maybe a, the larger trailer would be necessary. I can't remember the, and I don't see it here, the dimensions of that one. I think I asked last time, Mike, if you thought we could place that trailer in a place that would be good in the winter. <laughs> well, there's no doubt we can store this somewhere protected in the wintertime if it's not going to be where it is in the summertime. Yeah, okay. I Our years ago conversation about this was for that very reason, realizing the seasonality of additional needs and the ability to remove it and, and you know bring it out bring it out again um, needed and so yeah. I mean and it's not without risk, I get it. Vandalism, whatever, but that's always there no matter what we do. Yeah. Um, we see that in our existing public restroom now. Yeah, so. I have the same concerns about the building we're gonna build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not always treated nicely. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I don't know. I think one of the things that Bill pointed out last time was that the, that smaller one, the two plus eight, 188, seemed just a little more robust than the other one, so that's... Construction-wise? Yeah. Um, and I guess no matter what we do, it's an experiment. We don't really know what's going to happen, what the wear and tear will look like, if it's something we'll want to not have in the future, but I, I agree that we should probably, probably, we should do something, and uh, one of these should be one of the things we should do. And I know, Bill, you talked about something more permanent to spend the money in that way, and we certainly looked into that last time. It was quite expensive, and I don't think, you know, that's still a project that would need someone to manage it and design it. You know, in, in this case, we, City mm -hmm. Hall Liquor Store, we hire someone to do all that. I think a project that's smaller so is not necessarily unless we found grant money for it. But right now, we find, you know, and had we done that a few years ago and we talked about it, this issue would probably not be what it is right now. But we didn't for all sorts of reasons, and I wasn't here for part of it. And I'm sure COVID affected a lot of it and other things going on. Well, and but yeah, and that is something. I mean, I do think that this is what we need now, but I, I would like to see a long term, like, yeah. answer because we don't want to keep buying these things. No. That's what we end up doing. So, but for right now, now we are at a time when we have to yes. make a decision for this summer is all I'm trying to say. Right now, all of a sudden, timeliness kind of, oh, to me, overweighs, you know, what you're saying. And I think we have all want to shoot toward a second long-term deal. What I was hoping was something <coughs> like this could provide us that extra piece as we work towards something, no matter what it might be, yep. you know, on something like this. But I think it's money to spend in the intervening time because it's never been enough, um, I don't believe it. And part of it does get to be a location piece. Mm -hmm. And um, I know our town s seems small um, if you're driving around in a car, but if you've got some little kids somewhere, it's not necessarily or another immediate need. Uh, it just isn't. And there aren't enough trees. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh. it's just a fact. Okay. 
So with that, I would ask if someone would make a motion on a choice. Well, I think that I would motion then for the, the larger one. I mean, I, I recognize it's not perfect. Um, yeah. I feel like, you know, that will get us a good idea of our capacity, you know, like how much it's being used, how much are we able to get to it. Um, you know, there's the buyback, so we try it this summer. We'll know something more, um, you know, and if we can sell it, like if we find it was great and this is good, but maybe this isn't the quality that we want, then maybe we can go for a higher quality one next time. But, but anyway, my motion is for, for that one to begin the discussion. Okay, a second on that. All right, I will second that in the interest of time. Any further comments or questions? Does that one have a utility closet to keep cleaning supplies and stuff in? I don't think any of them do. Did I don't they think they did. I think in. we were supposed to. Did you remember seeing one that did, Bill? I thought there was one that had. Oh, you know, now that you're saying it. I'm just wondering how, how is that physically going to happen for them to clean it? Are they going to have to throw stuff in the back of a pickup truck twice a day and then haul it around all day or bring it back to the public works? Um, yes, probably that's what we'll do. Not necessarily public works, maybe both public works and the parks office. I mean, we do that now to some extent to truck around supplies. Uh, we'll have to come up with a better way to do it in order to bring mopping equipment with, which we typically just have on site now. Um, but we'll figure it out. That seems like kind okay. of a hardship. It'll be tricky, but we're good at that kind of stuff. I'm sure you could even have a small container down there or something with things. Yeah, I mean, it, I couldn't, I don't want to just yeah. go off cuff and tell you how we're going to handle it because I don't know, but we have resourceful people. Is there any opportunity to, when you dig in power, to bring up a stub of water in a dump station? Sure. Um, it'll be more cost to do that, uh, water and sewer in Broadway. So we could potentially do something like that. Any idea what kind of distance? Uh, I'm sure one's on one side of the street, one's on the other. So a long ways. It would be a lot of money. and. Uh, with the way these are set up, I guess I wouldn't recommend doing that right away because they're built to be not connected. They don't oh. need to be. They've got their own separate supply. We've got an ability to bring water and so does Pete to fill the tank and, and uh, so I'd say that's more of a future consideration. Um, which reminded me. And we have the ability to do this ourselves if we need to, right? We talked about that. Including, we could hook it to a truck and bring it to the rec park and use their existing dump station. So, mm. yeah, if there if we need to service it ourselves, we can. Uh, we'd much rather use Pete because he's in the business and knows how to do this and is good at it. But it would not be a fire though. I got to thinking too, would Pete ever be interested in this? I mean, he offered it, but he wanted a three year, you know, that was the problem with his lease is three years equated purchase price. Yeah. But in the same vein, maybe after it went through a summer and it looked okay, who knows? I mean, there's a potential purchaser you don't know. Right. I would think it'd be a conversation we could have. Um, it was one of many. I can still see this for events around the county. There's enough of them between bike races, things at Portage, whatever. I mean, there's enough events. I could could see someone finding interest in this, a little entrepreneur right. along the way. So anyways, all right. Uh, OK, I second it. You asked a question. Anything further? No. OK. I'll put this out for vote. Craig. Um, do we have a specific trailer we're buying? Is the one that's well, I, the I, buyback program? 
Yeah, that that was my motion. Yeah. Portable yep. restroom trailers, ADA plus six stall for one hundred and seven nine eighty. With the buyback. Yeah. Yes. Okay. With the six stalls and the ADA, I'm not sure if that was a hydraulic one or not. I can't remember. Does anybody remember that? Yeah, this is the one that that kneels down low. Yeah. The. It's already mounted. With I think the Jag was the one that was taller and had a ramp, a longer ramp. Oh, yeah. And this one was yeah. the one that gets lower. Yeah. That would be way better, I think. I do, too. But either one yeah. would work in the right. space. Right. Okay. Um, I'll vote yes on the buyback one. Okay. Thank you. Ben? No. Okay. Bill? Yes. Yes. Aye. All right. Thank you all very much, and thank you all very much for adding this on to this evening's conversation. See you next Wednesday, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a try. Oh. <laughs> worth I was going to go yeah. with you. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, goodness. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we do need to quickly look at our um, assignments so that um, <coughs> I'm going to share my screen. Why if can't we just go with the assignments we have. Is that well? If everyone's okay, I mean, I mean, just for now. I mean, that's you know, okay. Just Bill can just take over for. Yes, it would be Aaron. Active Living Steering Committee. We can give you the details. Yeah. Um, animal arrow, Arrowhead Animal Rescue. So that's dog pound, cat pound, C club. Uh, we'll get you that. <laughs> we've got it written down. Yeah. That would be it. Um, unless anyone wanted to trade anything, I'm you know, is anything. Well, I haven't been going to the downtown business. I know Mike has, but yeah. And so if you wanted, it'd be nice to have a city council wanted. come. I would like to go unless someone else had time or Wait, inclination. Like yeah, I would like to hear what they're. I don't get around downtown enough anymore. I'd like to hear what <coughs> they're talking about. I used to. Hear more. Yeah. Well, no, that'd be right. it. You, um, you would do it. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it too, but you're, you're, I think it makes sense for you to do it. Well, I mean, as usual, if people want to go to these, I mean, it's not like, um, whatever. Yeah. Okay. But you go. Um, so we'll get you the rest of the details then on that, on those yeah. three. Is there any? We can give you the full list too, in case there's something you were. Yeah, if you want to advocate for a, a different <laughs> position. Yeah. So one. they'll send out the full list. How's that? And then you can look and see what other. Because like community leadership, we need to get you added, but it just mm -hmm. got canceled for tomorrow in case yeah. you didn't see that one. I didn't see that one. Ooh, I don't. You were on the. I well, looked. Was I, okay. I did. I did go it through. It just came. Like, did it? Yeah. Not that was reason. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It right. just came out and then it just got canceled. <laughs> all like really <laughs> quickly. Change my mind. Yeah. So that's yeah. probably all right. Okay. Um, Craig, any reports? No, I didn't make the meeting. Uh, park board meeting last night. I had another conflicting meeting that I was at, so I don't have anything. <coughs> Okay. We're just all curious about getting the um, kiosk and community connections That's open great. house set. I think you were considering Memorial Day weekend. We just like yeah, I think kiosks. Well, I think they're doing a dedication. Yeah, and then I think the actual dedication to George Morrison. Like, weren't they looking at um, the wooden, wooden boat, boat show? show? What? Well, not Jan, Jan. Just you had to be in the meeting, okay? <laughs> but Jan just sort of threw that out and is trying to include the kiosk with it and the whole kit and caboodle because she thought all these people will be here. But you know, that's really the boat show. I would like the right. city to do our stuff because we'll get lost right. in that. I feel. Are we gonna do the 
yeah are we, are we waiting for the george morrison thing to get built and then do it or are we gonna yes do that okay yeah, and that'll probably get done before the kiosks, right? I would say yes. Right, so we can do it before the kiosk. I mean, that's the, right. Before the, we're it's not the George Morris. Decouple kiosk. the kiosk entirely from this conversation. We're just <laughs> let's, let's we're decouple. just planning on the community, community connection. Okay, the okay. Morrison yeah. plan. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Correct. Right. Thank you. That's the way I see it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right, Ben. I had nothing. I was on vacation, and uh, so I missed planning and zoning. So and then we canceled the other day. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Bill, not yet. Correct. <laughs> Michael. Well, you were at planning and zoning. I was. Yes. Um, so we had two things there that uh, we talked about: the heights. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whether or not they're meeting what we want them to do. Um, and we were just not the heights, not the height. height. Sorry, height, height of, of regulations. In yeah. in general, sorry. <laughs> Place. What happens when they come okay. up with a name like that? Yeah. God. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, it's it's just our, our building limits. Um, and I think you know we started talking about it. It was just a small group, but you know one of the thoughts was is that maybe the height itself is fine. Like as long as we're clear about you know we're willing to negotiate when it's not downtown, but when it's downtown, that's kind of it. You know, at least it gives people an idea that they could talk to us. Like, hey, we want to build this thing. Gives us a minute to say like, oh, that's really tall. <laughs> you know, not just yeah. like breaking it, but like whatever. So, but it gives us a moment to like have that discussion. So maybe it is fine the way it is. You know what I, and just, to, and I won't no. take up a lot of time, but like what I don't like about the height yeah. is it's like, midpoint of the actual height like it's really oh. like <laughs> why do we do that yeah it's pretty common i know but it's standard really, i'd say even it's yeah yeah no no i gotcha for sure and well that brought up the the further discussion we had which was about phil and that that guy <laughs> that guy phil <laughs> like, oh my god <laughs> i just can't win the uh fourth grader Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I like if it. If you knew him. <laughs> yeah. And Matt. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh so yeah, we started talking about that because one we have we talk about Phil and like how much you can bring in and when we would say anything and it and you know, these numbers didn't mean anything to me, but Anton was there and he was like, That is a huge amount. Yeah. Like, that's a hundred dump truck loads. Is that's when, and that's when that's we would allowed. say something. Well, <laughs> there is no disallowed. That's if you need a thousand cubic yards of fill before you even need to talk to us, and then all you have to do is provide an erosion control plan. There's no limitations yeah. on it in our ordinances. The problem. So that feels like, I, well, even you know, I mean, Anton knows a whole lot more than I do, and there was no easy consensus that could be had like in a minute. But we know that a, a thousand yards is not. Is not what we want to see. But mm. the the logical extreme of it is a problem. But it never happens either. So it hasn't been a problem. It's been, I mean the idea that someone could even do that on a property in town is ridiculous. Like that's what the problem is more than anything else. That it just doesn't make any sense to yeah. have a regulation that says that. It doesn't serve any purpose. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So what about all the fill that went behind Rodney's house? Like how much is that? That was a lot of fill. It's well short of a thousand yards. But that's still a lot. I mean, that helps me get perspective. Probably business park. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a lot of fill brought in to do that construction. I um, mean, that, that new big building storage. Yeah, I'm sure there wasn't a thousand yards there. It's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, a thousand yards is something you do on a 20 acre parcel when you've got a road construction project next door that's looking for a place to put their fill, right? It's not a. It's amazing. It's, it's not the it's kind a, of thing you do lot. for a residential development, or certainly not a city lot. It's just ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So oh. those were two things that came up, and then we started talking about uh, the short stays um, and working with the county because they already have a system in place you know for licensing and for mm -hmm. keeping track of folks <coughs> make 
making sure people who are in, in the zones that we say they can, we can actually monitor that better than we can now. Um, that was a discussion that we began, but yeah, we just began the more to come because it was just we just long, took we took what meeting. they had. It was a long meeting. Yeah, it was a, it's a busy meeting. It's a good one. Yeah. Well, just took it. what the county has already written and kind of overlaid you know, what would work for us. Yeah, right. With and a few items of decision to still be made. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, plenty. I mean, there's plenty. It's not anywhere near ready for prime time, but yeah. Back to the height thing. You know, yeah. I, I think like right now we think about downtown and then we think recently the apartment building up at the top of the hill. But what I'm also feeling as more new people move into town you know before if you lived in town you just built your house and there you go but now i think people are looking to make sure what they build goes as high as it can to get their view and i'm beginning to think that the residential area will continue to see that more than we ever have before and that's mm -hmm. kind of what makes me think and, and then it gets back to like ben said it's so hard because we're on a hill everything you do and then you've got the front side and the back side, you know, kind of, and it just, yeah, yeah, I, it's, it's hard. But that's, for me, one of the reasons I would want height looked at again. And, and when you're saying that, I mean, we have, I, I mean, the rule seems pretty clear, and it seems like it's been working. What are you? Well, let's hold off on that. Yeah, at I'm just At the next meeting, that. we're going to look at a few yeah. just like okay. yeah, case right. study type yeah. examples yeah. to help I think about the height thing is probably it. not working, which is why I mean I know it's come. Well, what do you mean not? Well, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> okay, we can talk about height. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> it's enough out of you. <laughs> That's right. You wanted to go home, and now look at you. <laughs> I'm all right. Okay, so done. Oh. This is really fast. So I sent out my every couple months note out to the Coast Guard station. This time I got Ooh. sent out to somebody in Norfolk, Virginia, who uh, it's now shifted to the div divestiture manager in Norfolk. No timeline provided, of course, because the listed steps include district approval, approval headquarters <coughs> approval, environmental review, et cetera, and it's, we just don't know. But we'll contact you when we do. And I'm like, at what point are you in this process? Give up. I think uh, that's a positive step, honestly. That yeah, it's I mean, not somebody that's actually doing Coast Guardy things. Instead, it's yeah, it it has gone. It's gone from Cleveland to Norfolk. So yeah. okay. it's, I mean, I have yet another person on my list that I can just copy all. Um, then I just sent a note over to David Matthews of the um, Shippo the state historical whatever they were posting their rfp this week for their contractor they're hoping to have the contractors hired and their fiscal year begins july 1st and they'd like to start work after that i have a copy of the sow if anybody wants it monday i am presenting with ann sullivan at a canadian tourism group is working its way around the lake in several different trips, learning about the communities, how we operate, whatever. And so they're here all Monday morning, and there's a lunch, and oh, they've asked to know about our city visions and goals, and so I'm putting together a little, little presentation on that. A lot of it ends up being joined with county anyways. And then emergency preparedness conference is April 19th through the 21st again up at Community Center, and I've been asked to do the welcome remarks again on Friday. That's all. Bam. Bam. Boom. Boy, that was fast. I talked fast. Where did Gavel go? Oh, it's over here. Do I get Good to Friday. do this? Yeah. How about that? Thanks, everyone. Oh, did you want to do that? No, you just a little more verve. <laughs> just there we go. Thank you. Oh, good goofy. Yay. <laughs>